Hello guys, DJ Parson here and I have a game of the Intermezzo Championship for you guys today. But I'm not alone, I am joined once again by two great players. I'm joined by Payada and Weidenbaum. Hello everyone. So like, like we did I think two years ago, we're gonna once again, we are all three of us in the Grandmasters of the Intermetal Championship. Uh, so we're gonna look at our game that we three played in and uh, yeah, I hope you guys can uh, see a lot uh, of our thoughts. Um, so yeah, you guys excited for this match to look at it again? Yeah, I think uh, it will be an interesting game and also maybe interesting for the viewers to hear all perspectives uh, from the, all of the players. Yeah, I think the first time it was big success on YouTube and yeah. we promised that once we will all come back to Grandmaster, which unfortunately took us two years, we'll repeat it so there is no other way around it. Let's do it. Yeah, we did it again. We all ended up in the Grandmasters again, which is really, really amazing. So I'm looking forward to the game. So yeah, without uh, anything else, let's, uh, let's get into it, guys. I'm gonna share it now. So we are in the match, we can see I'm first player, then we have Weidenbaum and then Payada. Um, so yeah, let's start. I um, took my first card, the library. Um, I could have took a leader, but um, I didn't, like if I take Confucius, then Weidenbaum gets Hammurabi and the library. So I didn't, didn't want that. So yeah. I would be happy about it. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So, Weinmann, what's uh, what was your pick? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of strong leaders available in the row for one civil action. And I think in general, I like Hammurabi a little bit more than Confucius, but I was also a little bit afraid because there is Caesar on the row. And I thought maybe if Payada now goes for Confucius, Caesar could be a nice counter pick against both of those leaders. And then I thought having Hammurabi could maybe be a little bit dangerous. On the other hand, I also thought that DJ Parson will have some nice alternative leaders uh, instead of Caesar. Either Confucius or Hippocrates will be left for him, and with that I was hoping that maybe he won't go for Caesar, and with that I was then willing to go for Hammurabi, and it, uh, also I, uh, with, with the second civil action will take the Patriotism. Not a great card, but in case DJ Parson will not go for Caesar, then uh, it maybe can also help a little bit. Yeah, and it it keep it like easy for me because if you look at like three CAs, there is like no engineering genius or something. So I would probably just like take a leader and wonder. And uh, I took Colosseum because I like it, and I also like to use it as an icon on Discord because you know the Colosseum is a place where you organize the tournaments. And for leaders, when like playing from a third seed, I think going for Hippocrates is much easier than for Confucius, which will like force me to seed every time. And this way I have like more control around the game, even with like the third MA from Colosseum, but I would still not like it to be forced to push from the last seed. Yeah, and last position Confucius can always be a little bit tricky. Um... I agree with that, but luckily I'm not in last position, I'm in first, so I think, yeah, I'm gonna go for Confucius, elect him then, and gonna do the usual stuff, I mean, not much happening here, just doing the moves, getting a good leader, so I'm pretty happy with my setup, getting a good wonder and a good leader in my mind, um, so yeah, I think I'm off to a good start. Yeah, definitely a nice leader and wonder combination, and no. And I was still maybe happy that I don't have to play against Caesar. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could have considered going for Caesar, but uh, yeah, I, I think... I think for you it's probably the better choice to go for Confucius. Caesar's just a little bit uncertain. Exactly, and in the, in the Grandmasters League of, uh, of Intermezzo, you don't want to mess around with Caesar and try things out. I mean, it can also work out very well, of course, but yeah. uh, no, maybe better to go for the safe Confucius. At my turn, I think the turn is relatively clear. I elect Hammurabi, I will build my mine and increase my population. And then with Hammurabi, I have still two civil actions that I can use. And with that, I will just take the Engineering Genius. There's the Hanging Gardens available, but there's an even better wonder coming down the road. The Pyramids, both of my opponents have already taken. Um, both of you have already taken a wonder. So I will be guaranteed to get the Pyramids at the next turn. And also there are some interesting H1 wonders in the game, like Silk Road or University. 
Universitas, so maybe even one of those will be revealed very early, and then I could even maybe go for an early Universitas, so I'm not taking an HA wonder very early has always the advantage to maybe leave yourself open for an H1 wonder, so I was quite happy to just take the engineering genius here. Ah, yeah, solid choice. That's, yeah, that's true. Never miss a leader, but you can miss a wonder because, like, wonders from H1 are usually more stronger than from HA. And my turn was also like straightforward. So I elect my leader, build mine, increase population. And with my last action, I can only take one yellow card. And I took the frugality on the left to not move the row too much, to have like more H1 card prepared for me and to like make it worse for maybe DJ Parson. And maybe if DJ Parson will not take any cards, also for Raiden Bound that all the juicy h1 decks and cards will be for two cas yeah so do you think frugality is also the best cut or would you have taken the rich land if if the row didn't matter i think st I still i built uh, already the, the mines so mm. the frugality is the card which i will use for sure and will not like take away a space in my hand so ah. and I, I think like for start it's, it's quite not that relevant if yeah. you if you have like one foot more or one rope more okay. yeah, I, I if there will be like urban growth i will take it but without that i think frugality is fine yeah probably true so yeah, i will push of course i push the scientific method and we get the development of crafts sadly it's still not enough to finish my wonder but i will start building it i thought about building the philosophy but when you have the library i think sometimes it can be pretty good to just uh, start building on that delay the si delay the science production by one um, and then this way i can keep producing two food um, so i like that um, and what else i'm going to grab with my two civil actions it's going to be the knights um, pretty early knights can be quite important if you get the correct tactics um, and yeah, I couldn't really take any useful cards from the first row. And then I, I guess I maybe would have also liked the warfare. I think warfare and three players isn't isn't so bad. Um, but there's also two warfares, and so there's more chance to get that. And knights generally are um, are good for the most of the best tactics early on. So yeah, didn't want to give that to Weinbaum or Piada here. Yeah, no, I think it's always nice to have a copy of Knights. Alright, then it's my turn and I will go for the the pyramids this turn. There is no Universitas, there would be uh, the Forbidden City is coming down the road, so that could potentially also be interesting, but the problem is if I wait for this, then uh, I have a lot of civil actions that I can spend this turn. I can of course maybe spend them somehow, but with the development of crafts uh, having been revealed, I even can finish the pyramids immediately, and that is also what I will do, getting the additional civil action immediately, and then with my last two civil actions, I will just take this uh, early copy of Iron with, to hopefully build up my uh, economy. I also considered uh, not finishing the pyramids and then maybe building the lab and increasing my population because if you go for iron you sometimes can be a little bit low in science and then it could maybe be nice to get the science production uh, going from the lab but uh, at the end just, it just felt a little, bit, a little bit better to finish the pyramids, get this additional civil action and I was hoping that I maybe still somehow find the necessary science to pull off the iron while not leaving myself too vulnerable. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's already disgusting, disgusting, uh, disgusting. That way the bomb has like six CAs and <laughs> four. Yeah, and nine. So That's unfair. True. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my uh, two first uh, military ca uh, cards were Fure and Border Conflict, oh. and I can see like that way the bomb is like now building his economy he doesn't have like the sign he has like plenty of ca so i was like okay dj parson will like see it every time and i can probably be, can be like one of the two stronger players with the swordsman for one ca now so i just like pushed the foray because it's like safer than the border conflict and yeah we get free events and i think from them get, getting the population is the easy choice because yeah, it's true. better than two food yeah. and development of politics you doesn't need when you have Colosseum. 
etc. And then I like spent my CAs on building philosophy, igloo, then part of the wonder and take, taking two cards from a card row. And I, I don't think when you plan to go for a military, you are not going for printing presses. So it's quite easy that you will take the rich land on swordsman. With Colosseum, you don't need the warfare. Yeah, that's so true. I think this is a very straightforward turn for me. And I should be like ever of my plan to getting stronger soon. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Which I don't swordsman. have problems usually in games, so. Yeah. Yeah, good to... Interesting with the two strength events that you had. Um, but yeah, of course, I want to push, I have to push, so we will advance the deck a little bit more. We get the markets here. Um, I will be able to finish my library. And I will decide to take a new one immediately, the Forbidden City. Um, as Piana said, I also want some civil actions. Don't want to leave all those uh, to Weidenbaum. Um, and especially, I also, like, with my heavy calf and knights in hand, there is a game maybe where I can go for a lot of knights uh, and then I need happy faces or the next best thing, the Forbidden City. Um, so, yeah, maybe not ideal. I guess I would have maybe taken the Universitas instead if that was uh, one more to the left. Um, or maybe even without. Uh, I I'm not sure. Uh, if, what do you guys think? Should I've taken the Universitas or is Forbidden City better here? If you if you take Universitas, then you maybe can't get out of corruption, and then yeah. it's maybe too costly. On the other hand, I was quite happy that I will be able to get the Universitas because yeah. for me, with already having pyramids, um, the Universitas is definitely the better one. On the other hand, Silk Road is also uh, an interesting wonder for me, so I don't think I would be too unhappy if the Universitas is taken away. Yeah, and I, I dislike Forbidden City very much. I really like, <laughs> I know, like this yeah. one there. <laughs> because I prefer like to have a real happy faces because there are like some events which give you something for like happy faces like immigration and then prosperity later. Yeah. And even like for impact of happiness, this just doesn't count. So I really like don't like this wonder at all and I will not take it. Yeah. I know that much. I know that uh, you you're very loud about that opinion that it's bad. But yeah, I agree. It's uh, at the beginning when it came out, the wonder. I wasn't sure if it, some people said it's just two heavy faces, but uh, no, not not quite. So yeah, it's definitely a lot worse than real just heavy faces. Hanging gardens, meet meeting pyramids, but worse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Weinbaum, your turn next. No. Um, at my turn, I was, as I said, quite happy that the Universitas is available for me, and uh, so I also took it. A Silk Road could also be interesting. I have a lot of civil actions, but uh, I, at the end, felt like the Universitas is maybe a little bit stronger, and I will also be taking the Engineering Genius this turn. There will, well, were quite a lot of um, different ways how I could have played this turn. For example, if I should take the Engineering Genius, then I could, for example, also build a second lab, and I would still have enough... Uh, resources to finish the universitas at the next turn then i could really get a lot of uh, science production going and or i could also say i build a stage of the universitas as i did in the game and instead of the engineering genius i could take the urban growth and the breakthrough which is two resources and two science and maybe better than only three resources I still ended up going for the Engineering Genius here because uh, the event deck will maybe flick, flip relatively quickly and then I think it might be important to maybe have the chance to build some military out of the uh, developments that are left. There are still development of trade routes and science and if one of those should be revealed I have the necessary science to go for knights. I was hoping that with Payada already having swordsman he won't take the knights away. And now that I have the Engineering Genius and build a first step or not build a lab, I could I have enough resources to finish Universitas and build a Knight. So I could improve my economy while also preparing for the event deck. And because of that, I at the end still took the Engineering Genius, even though I also could have gotten two other quite uh, nice yellow cards instead. And now, so that was my plan, finishing Universitas at the next turn. And then maybe if there are, I get some signs from the developments, I could build a Knight and otherwise maybe a Swordsman. So that I hopefully can also be prepared for the events yeah pretty strong setup i think for you having the pyramids and now also the universitas and iron in hand uh, no, i was yeah. i was certainly quite happy about my start yeah yeah amazing start 
<laughs> yeah, so in my turn, I had option to seed uh, border conflict or developed territory, which I have in hand. And after looking at the situation and on a great head start of Vedebaum, I I was like, okay, there is like no way how to catching him without like some luck and strength strength events. So I seeded uh, the border conflict to the deck. And then I was quite unhappy that I can't take the knights from from him because the second knights knights are already taken by DJ Parson, so I will be the only player without them. And when both of your opponents have knights, then probably one of them will play the tactic, the other one will copy it. And I already like seeded two strength events to the future deck, and I was like, okay, this is weird, but let's just like build Swordsman and then improve my strength by maybe some H H1 leader like Joan of Arc or Saladin or, or Zizka or Nostradamus and, and be like on the safe side. So they don't know what is inside and maybe they will not push that hard for the strength. Yeah, and you become... And I take Breakthrough, which is like my favorite card. I think I even like mentioned it in an interview. I won international that Breakthrough is my most favorite card because you can have science without building science. <laughs> yeah, that's a great trick, yeah. No, I think, uh, I mean, you get up to two strength this turn. I mean, I'm obviously gonna push, but uh, for now you're the strongest. And one one of your cards you pushed is Furay, right? So uh, you would still yes. be able to win that end. I mean, it's pretty unlikely that Weimbaum will go for military next turn, I guess. I mean, I guess he might, I will yes. Build a little bit. He has so many civil actions, he might be able to do everything in one turn, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I pushed, I got the last development, a religion. Um, not ideal for me, I think, because I have the Forbidden City, but I will still take it, of course. Uh, and then I will develop the knights. I'm gonna build one knight. Uh, I could have finished the Forbidden City. Uh, but I decided against it because I saw that Payada got stronger. We have uh, a lot of cards in the deck, so I wanted to be the strongest, meaning I couldn't finish the Forbidden City. Um, but yeah, going for the Knight. Preparing Masonry for next turn for the Forbidden City, and then also getting the Reserves. Um, I'm not, not super happy about the Reserves, but I couldn't really build a stage of the Forbidden City because I don't have the Masonry yet. Um, so uh, I just grab the reserves. I don't need Brand Circuses or Drama. I can't take the Knights, so just take the reserves. Uh, they will come in handy at some point, even though I don't really have so many civil actions at the moment. Yeah. And I get another horse tactic, but yeah. Yeah, and also I at this point had luckily drawn a uh, horse tactic. I also have the I have the auto copy of the Phalanx in hand. And uh, no, then uh, this turn I will finish the Universitas and thanks to having the Engineering Genius I can finish the Universitas and then I still have enough resources left to also go for one night. The development of great routes were revealed so I also have enough science for that which I was happy about. So I can go for the knights, I can develop the knights, I can at least build one knight. However, when I only build one knight, then I am still only at three strength, and then it could happen that Payada gets stronger at his turn, and then DJ Parson could push, and I'm still the weakest. So while I could maybe be fine with that, I then at the end made the decision to, I think I will also take the cultural heritage, and then I make the decision to play the patriotism, and with that I have enough resources to also build a warrior. I, uh, thanks to the patriotism, have also the military action to do this, otherwise I wouldn't have one left. So now I think it's actually quite a useful card for me. And uh, that the next turn I can then reveal the phalanx tactic to maybe again get stronger and with the cultural heritage I could maybe start going for iron at the next turn if I don't maybe need to increase my strength even further. Yeah, pretty good with the patriotism. Not often that you can really use the patriotism HA so effectively, but here it's great to become the strongest for now. No, it's, uh, it's a card that I have only very rarely in hand, so I was happy that I can use it relatively nicely here. Yeah. And I was happy that Joan of Arc is, is there, because I already pushed two strength events to the deck, and with 
without like the knights, I would prefer to have like much more control about the top of the deck, like seeing if I can like push and there is like one of my strength card or maybe there is just like some blank card giving us science from DJ Parson. So I was happy that Joan of Arc is there and yeah, for sure I didn't see it because I, I'm the weakest one. And another interesting card in my hand from previous draw is open border agreement, but I uh, know that I will have like four MAs, but I was still like amazed that I have the open borders agreement because now I know that you will not have it together <laughs> and I will be the one having like a lot of MAs can like have a lot of uh, defense cards for colonization, etc. So it was quite good for me. And then I improved my strength to be the strongest and took the code of law for which I will have six science next turn and with breakthrough I will be very happy with four science next round. So a lot of science with just two laps. Yeah, great card that breakthrough. We're gonna see it in action soon. Uh, but yeah, a little bit typical that you have four military actions and by Mama's basically six civil actions and one military action now. Uh, it's a pretty payada start for you. I have to say. But yeah, I of course uh, am now the weakest, so it's sad that I can't push. Um, but I will push. <laughs> I forgot about that. I mean, I know that uh, like three cards were for me. Um, so it wasn't so likely that one of the cards from Piata would show up. So I do take the gamble to get the extra science and I will get, uh, or I will open the knowledge of the ancients. Getting two signs, one rock, and then a little bit more signs. Already three signs for Biden bombs are already finished. Um, both of his wonders. Then I will go for that uh, masonry. Finish the Forbidden City in just one stage. And then because I'm the weakest, uh, I can now use the uh, reserves immediately to get that to rocks and build warrior. And I can show my tactics. So I will go up to seven strength. And then with my last selection, I will grab a rich land. There's, a, I think, still oh, oh, only one irrigation and the iron left. Um, so I think it's relatively unlikely. Maybe I should have grabbed another reserves instead of the rich land here. Um, will be interesting to see if I can use that rich land uh, at all. I'm also, like, the cartography could have been great with both of my um, cards in hand being territories and one being a very, very good one. Sadly, I didn't really have the civil actions for that this turn. So I had to let that slide. I think it's unlikely that Weidenbaum will go for it, by, but I'm not sure. No, I mean, there's, I think, also no Suez canals or uh, colonies of cons can still be nice, but maybe not as strong as when there's a Suez canal. Yeah, true. Then at my turn, I will again, uh, like in all of my turns, not use my politics phase. The only event that I think I have in hand is the Pestilence. And then it is then I will start going for iron thanks to the knowledge of the ancients. I don't even necessarily have to play the cultural heritage. It's a little bit risky to uh, go for the iron because I will reveal my tactic at some point during the turn and then I will go up to seven strength, which is not enough to overtake DJ Parson, but it is enough to be stronger than Payada. And with that, I was willing to still go for the iron. Otherwise, I could have also revealed a tactic and build a knight. But in this case, I would not be able to use the military action from Hammurabi for civil action. And so that was also a bit of an economical value that I missed out on. And so I just went for the iron, I went for one upgrade, and then I still have a lot of civil actions left, and I will use those to take some cards. The rich land will allow me to go for two iron upgrades at the next one if I want to offer one upgrade and building a knight. I will increase my population. I take the reserves because uh, there's probably only one turn left for me in H1, and then I might be stuck at three food going into H2, but with the reserves I will be able to get another population out. And then with my last civil action I just played a cultural heritage. I'm really not a big fan of the irrigation, so I didn't want to take a discard and a cartography I also didn't want to take with there, no with there being no Zeus cannon and also with me not having any knowledge about colonies being in the deck and then with my last action I then finally will reveal the tactics so that I'm not the weakest. Yeah, still very strong now also having the tactic. I think Piata wasn't too happy that you had the tactic. Um, Probably not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and both of you have the tactics. <laughs> it was like, okay, they have them. 
And uh, I can see the top card with Joan of Arc, not when replaying it, but I looked for this one and now I know that on the top of the deck is Border Conflict. So that means that I'm in a no rush to seed. And I also have two colonies in my hand, not like in the future deck, but in hand developed territory and wealthy territory. And because this is also like not the only way, but the only efficient way how to get the strongest. So I will build another swordman, take and develop the cartography, even like developing it before the code of law, which is like signalizing to DJ Parson and Vader Baum that there is something strength related on the top. But uh, what can you do better than get destroyed your own mine or building with that border conflict? No. And I mean, there could also be colonies coming. So I wasn't totally certain, is it because of strength? Is it because of colonies? So maybe uh, the cartography can fool us into the wrong direction. Yeah, uh, but Pea, why didn't you also go for the Code of Laws? You wanted to keep a little bit of science for the iron to have that possibility or? I think I have six only after getting to, no, 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 I, I could play it, right? Yeah. I don't know, I, I think, I'm not sure now, but maybe I was thinking that like going for two upgrades of iron the next round is like more valuable than going for Code of Law, because we will be like still with like H1 card and it will be like better for my next round to improve my production than going for extra CA, which I probably like don't need right now because mm -hmm. There are like no, no cards which I would like to take from H1 and you never know what will come in H2 so I have probably some time until we will reach that point. Yeah. I was like thinking that there is like not enough cards from DJ Parson which will give us science for his like Confucius ability. Yeah, good reasoning, definitely. Yeah. All right, so, but I'm not the weakest, I think I will push. We get our first colony, and as Weidenbaum explained, yep. um, he is now, of course, the weakest. I think you will not push. Oh. <laughs> why didn't I push? Now I don't know why I didn't push. Okay. Maybe because Payada had the cartography now and you didn't want to push a colony, maybe. Yeah, that maybe really that. Maybe. I mean, I definitely didn't want to push the vast. Could also argue the same for the strategic. Um, I, I think both would have would have probably been fine, right? Uh, you get the extra science with Confucius, so it has a lot of worth to go for the push. Um, but yeah, I guess I decided against it. I'm gonna go for Gutenberg. I mean, I still only have the one igloo. Uh, I have masonry and there's an alchemy right here. And I think the other one is also still in the deck. Yeah, so um, yeah, I need a new leader. I could have gone for Saladin, uh, but here I decide I'm gonna get more out of Gutenberg than I would out of Saladin. So we'll even go for the monarchy here, go for Gutenberg, build a lab with the extra civil action, grab the theology because uh, yeah, I'm not sure, I think I forgot I had the Forbidden City. That is another big reason against Forbidden City, that you don't see it, uh, that you have it. So for someone like me who gets uh, tends to forget what his wonders do, um, that can be a problem because it doesn't show you immediately that you have those reserved, almost happy faces. So I grab Theology. Can also be useful in the future. I mean, they're pretty cheap. Uh, just four rocks with the masonry, so just one rock to upgrade. Um, so it's not bad to have it. Uh, and then with my last selection, I will grab the Code of Laws. So yeah, that was not much to do with the Theology. Um, with the last civil action if I hadn't taken the theology, so I think maybe it's fine the way I did it. No. Did you also consider going for Jan Shushka, or was he a little bit too expensive for three civil action? Yeah, I thought he was too expensive. Um, also, I, I, I don't know, I, I guess um, I'm not now going to be the weakest. I could have avoided that with Shushka. Um, but I didn't feel so much pressure. I didn't understand Piada's cartography meant he had a lot of strength events in there. Um, I thought more so there were maybe some more colonies. But uh, yeah, in retrospect, maybe um, Shishka would have been very good as well. Keep the pressure up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I wanted Gutenberg here. No. 
and uh, Shishka for three would have been also quite expensive. And at the moment, you have only one knight, so you would only, uh, at the moment, he wouldn't give you an additional tactic, so you would have maybe to destroy something. So I think that was probably fine to yeah. um, not take him for three. But I, on the other hand, was happy that I will be able to get him for one civil action now because I, you know, I will go for him. I, and then I have enough resource to build another knight, and I have also the population for it, and with that I will be able to get a second phalanx tactic, which will make me the strongest now. And thanks to the rich land, I can also go for another iron upgrade. So I was quite happy that I have a nice economy going, but now I also have taken the strength lead. I also was happy that DJ Parson didn't push, um, so that I have a little bit more time to uh, get stronger. And uh, I can build this knight thanks to having the reserves in hand. Otherwise, without having them in hand, I would have an uprising issue at the next turn. But like this, I can get another population out. And uh, no, I, one card that I definitely want to take here is also the breakthrough. As uh, Payada said, it's a really nice card to have. And getting it for one civil action, I think, is most of the times quite a nice deal. And I could just take a lot of cards, but at the end, I came to the conclusion that maybe I can just already used the reserves this turn that will mean that i have more civil act civil actions available at the next turn when there will be maybe some important h2 cards so i think it's better to already get this out of the way and then with my last civil action we'll take the frugality i'm not certain about this one because at the moment it's looking like i will just be stuck at two food i was hoping that maybe i can still use it and then once i at some point get the selective breedings going the other cards are maybe also don't really that need that much i mean the alchemy could be fine but i have decent science production already and maybe i can rather wait for H2 science solutions to really get a big boost, maybe also be prepared for Newton who is in the game. But maybe the warfare could be interesting because then if I should get the Republic and I miss out on the strategy, I have a bit of an alternative. So maybe I would actually like this a bit more than the frugality, but maybe I can also be able to get two food out of the frugality and then maybe that will also work. But the warfare, I think maybe could have been an interesting alternative here. Yeah, I think I agree think the frugality it's gonna stay in your hand for quite a while at least um, yeah. so i think warfare could have been fine as well to have the option as i said i like warfare quite a bit and in my turn i still know that there is like border conflict on the top and it seems like completely unfair to now give vaderbomb <laughs> extra free resources yeah that wasn't the plan doesn't... right it wasn't the plan, yeah. But what did, what can you do? I think I know that like DJ Parson cannot like increase his strength above mine very easily. But I have like colonies in hand, cartography on the table, so it was like very easy idea to just like say, okay, so I will push develop territory, Vaden Bomb will get the resources, DJ Parson will get something destroyed, which probably will not matter because of Gutenberg rebuilds. But better than be hit buy it later or not push at all because this way I may get colonies in the future. And then I go for the plan of iron plus two upgrades and then I don't have anything to do with my fourth civil action. So now you can see that I don't need even like fifth, I don't need even the fourth, but I took the Rama. It's like the opportunity card, but there is like no bug in the deck, so it was just like for me the best card from these which you can see because I was thinking that I will probably like revolt to Republic maybe in the future because I have like the extra MA from Colosseum and taking monarchy that late is not that great and DJ Parson is already on monarchy so there should be like enough governments for me in free player game. Yeah, definitely. I think this is a very late monarchy, so yeah, I can understand that you don't want to go for that. Um, and yeah, I think I'm starting to maybe regret a little bit at this point going for Gutenberg and giving Weidenbaum, uh, giving Weidenbaum the Zizka. Um But yeah, I, at least as you said, I can probably rebuild some of the things I lost with my Gutenberg. So... I'm of course the weakest, I will not push, I actually will destroy my alchemy. I guess I could have also destroyed the lab instead and rebuild with Gutenberg. But I will also, I, I wanted to grab the alchemy with Gutenberg and not rebuild this turn. Um, and I sadly didn't plan ahead as nice as Weidenbaum, so I'm stuck on three food here. 
Um, that is a little bit of a problem. I will build a knight to go up to 9 strength and show me new tactic to go up to 10 to at least be stronger than Payada. And then I have uh, quite a few civil actions left, so I will grab efficient upgrade and the wave of nationalism. The rest of the cards are mostly H1 cards, which I didn't like too much. Uh, and some of them I couldn't really grab. <laughs> Almost all of them I couldn't grab. Um, Himeji Castle could have been interesting, but I'm not so rich. I don't really have a good production of anything. Uh, so I'm going for the efficient upgrade to help either with the alchemy upgrades or with like coal or something. My coal is looking pretty good with the rich land and efficient upgrade, or even just for the selected breeding. No, I think those yellow cards will be very helpful for you. And one thing I'm very lucky with is I draw one card from H2 and immediately it's the mobile artillery. So uh, someone on YouTube is probably going to say this is streamer luck, but we are all of, all three of us are kind of like streamers. Uh, so that should <laughs> nullify itself, I think. Yeah, luckily, my politics uh, cards uh, aren't shown here. Otherwise, I, they could have seen how early I got the phalanx tactic with my Hammurabi draw, draws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are all lucky, so this is just like a normal game. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone will just like, uh, would like to get some great parts and we just get them. <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah. No. This turn I could have potentially seen it and maybe I should have actually done it, but I was not too certain if the events that I have in hand will actually be beneficial for me. Because one of them is the Rebellion and at the moment I have an unhappy worker, while bo both of you I think have your happy faces covered. And the other one that I maybe considered to see it more is the Pestilence. I have a free population, however if I should lose this then I, it immediately gives me an uprising issue. I have a little bit of time until the Pestilence is revealed, but I think at the end I was a little bit too afraid that this will just cause a lot of issues. And uh, I mean it could be nice to see it, I'm the strongest and I at least know that the Rebellion is not in the deck because I have it in hand, but um, uh, no. So, but I didn't made a decision to not push here, and I also wasn't too certain what I should do with this turn. I could potentially just uh, maybe upgrade my mine, and then I have four civil actions left to grab some cards. Maybe I could grab an efficient upgrade, and then either journalism or opera. I think it could be a somewhat decent turn, but I also was not too happy about it. And at the end, I made a decision to go for the scientific method. I could have been also Nobel, but Jan Shushka is really giving me a lot of value at the moment. I didn't like to drop down to two military actions here. So instead, I used the scientific method to increase my science production. I can take it, I can develop it, and I can go for one upgrade immediately. And uh, no, sadly, I don't have a second lab, so and also not a happy population, so it, I might only be able to do this one upgrade for a while. Also, one thing that I was not too happy about is that now I don't have enough science to go for an H3 government form at the next turn. And uh, if I would not invest my science into scientific method, then I would have enough. On the other hand, if I then go for a government form, I will be relatively low in science afterwards. Uh, so it's maybe not bad to get a bit of more science production going before going for the government form and uh, yeah, so I was thinking maybe there aren't any government forms on the row anyway the next turn then it doesn't matter and uh, if there are some then maybe I have to wait one turn but can then go for the government form after that while already having increased my science production so that was my turn at the end just improving my economy even more but I wasn't too happy about it because it's a bit costly I can only do this one upgrade for now but at the end it was the turn that I was the most happy with also there's Newton in the game so he could give me some nice value now and with that I went for this turn at the end yeah uh, seems pretty expensive three or five all your turn to just get two more science production. I mean, in the long no. run, it's probably gonna be good, as you said, with the leaders and everything, but yeah, the turn itself feels a little bit underwhelming. I agree with that. No, no, yeah. I, I also agree with that, but I also wasn't too happy about the alternatives available. So at the end, I went for this and uh, let's see how it will work out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm playing the TTA for beginners, so I know top of the deck. There is a foray, so I'm not seeding. And there is not many ways how I can get like stronger than DJ Parson. And as you already uh, saw in my previous turn, I can like spend some CAs for irrelevant cards like drama. Oh no no! Oh, oh it, 
it, it wasn't there. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> forget everything you just said. Forget everything. There was <laughs> this this nice card, yeah. which uh, then allows me to go for the code of law to have like extra 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 action, and and then I took. Nobel, because I, I knew that now like one of the two, two, two cards on the top is Fure, so I would like to be like stronger than DJ Parson, and I think this is like the only way how I can get stronger, and I will have I think exactly eleven which I need. Yeah, eleven strength, and there is like n no cards which I'm like interested interested in taking. I can take maybe the journalism. To be like prepared for Shakespeare, but it is weird to be prepared for Shakespeare if you have Nobel already in place, <laughs> right? True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like you and uh, me, Payada, we have to to do so much to not be the weakest. While Weinbaum is just the strongest by having Jishka. Uh, so uh, yeah, it feels a little bit mean that the one guy who has probably the best economy has such an easy way to be the strongest now. Yeah, and getting already extra resources from border yeah. conflict and maybe even from Fure. <laughs> so yeah, I now am the weakest again. I will still push and I will open the Fure. I think there was no way for me to really get stronger. Uh, so I decided to push. I guess I could have gone for strategy, but then it would have messed up my plan to go for the alchemies. So I will go for the alchemy now. Um, I will grab the strategy. So my hand is really, really full. That was one problem I was having here. Um, so I also have to upgrade one of my labs without using Gutenberg. So I used him to upgrade, uh, to develop the card, but not to upgrade here. Uh, and I'm having big problems with corruption because of the three food that's just sitting there in my bank. So that is uh, very problematic. So, um, I'm actually I'm gonna upgrade both of my labs and grab the selective breeding. So not not much more to do with my Gutenberg in the following turns. Uh, so yeah, in retrospect, I'm definitely not too happy with that decision to go for Gutenberg. Uh, Zishka probably would have been a lot better for me, and I would have been the one who's the strongest. I would have gotten those all of those extra rocks, and Weinbaum would have suffered a little bit. Um, but yeah, maybe I can go for James Watt in the next turn, use him to go for the selective breeding, and then later on go for the coal. I think that was definitely on my mind here, so I wanted to have the selective breeding. Uh, get some really cheap upgrades with Efficient and the Rich Land. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, overall I think I'm kind of happy with this turn, even though it's not all that great. But getting up to 5 science is definitely nice. Yeah, and if our listeners are careful, they know that the last card in H1 is like from DJ Parson and it's like the scientific breakthrough. So as Weidebaum said that he will not have enough science for uh, the H3, uh, H2 government. So if he will see it, he will have. So let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's... And, and uh, there was already a Confucius event earlier, uh, revealed earlier on a uh, U-turn Payada, so I could have potentially gone for the Republic, but I didn't like it too much because DJ Parson has already taken the strategy away and I didn't take the Warfare all earlier on. So I, this turn, was willing to seed. This turn I seeded the Pestilence, but the difference is that now I have wonderful Ray, and with that I can take some food to increase my population, which then makes the Pestilence uh, just a lot more easier to handle for me, and I think both of you at the moment have no free population, so the, the Pestilence might actually do a little bit of damage to both of you. And then, of course, I was very happy to see, and it was also one of the reasons why I seeded, I didn't really expect all uh, the scientific um, breakthrough, but uh, I thought that maybe another Confucius event could be on top, and so I thought there could maybe be some additional science, and then I can, not, uh, I can go for the constitutional monarchy instead of the Republic. Maybe I would have also just taken it in hand and not gone for the Republic, because Republic would be quite dangerous, so I definitely was quite happy that there is an event on top that gives me some additional science, and then I can just take the Conmon and develop it immediately. <laughs> And then I have to get out of corruption. I will use the frugality. Um, I, when I now upgrade my iron mine, can just uh, get out of corruption. Otherwise, I maybe could have just skipped it. I still consider skipping it because having the two food lying around might actually also be a little bit bad. 
And so I wasn't certain, should I even use it? At the end, I thought maybe I can still handle it to um, uh, to have uh, the food, two food lying around. Maybe I will still be able to get out of corruption. And so I, uh, at the end, used the frugality. And then with my last two civil actions, I can take some cards. There are a bunch of interesting ones on the row. And uh, I um, could, for example, take the efficient upgrade, which I maybe can use in the selective breedings upgrade at some point. But um, I, when taking those cards, did not only think about myself, but also a little bit about denial. And I don't really deny any cards that I will take, or of course I deny them, but that was not the reasoning. But if I take two cards that aren't on the discard spot, then James Watt will be discarded on Payada's turn. And as DJ Parsons said, uh, DJ, uh, James Watt could be quite a strong leader for him. The Cole is actually also coming down the row. Gutenberg isn't really doing that much. So I thought James Watt could be a very big improvement for DJ Parsons. So I wanted to make sure that he is discarded on Payada's turn. And uh, for that, I had to take two cards that aren't on a discard spot. And I just went for the justice system because I have a little bit of science. Maybe I can just invest it into that. Maybe it will also help me to get out of corruption and the opera. Um, could maybe also be helpful uh, in H3. There's a little bit of synergy and I can have something that allows me to invest into a bit of culture production. And uh, no, the frugality actually could have been an idea because maybe I could get the second copy of selective breeding at some point, but maybe uh, Payada also still needs some food solutions. So maybe I have to work with the ocean liner service and then the frugality wouldn't do anything. So I instead just relevant for those two technologies. Yeah, very mean. I really was yeah. looking forward to what. <laughs> yeah, and then no one take irrigation, and I think DG Parson already have like selective breeding, so there is like one selective breeding in the deck and one ocean liner. So hopefully, I will take one of these cards, weigh them on the other, and we everyone will can have like solution for more more population. But it's like worth noting, don't take any other wonders other than like ocean liner service, not even like Harvard College because you need food solutions. So this should be always on your mind looking for to the future, what you will need, what to take. Yeah. So I think that, did I push? Or yes, you I, pushed. Yeah, I think you, I pushed and I wasn't that very happy about <laughs> this, this card, but at the end it doesn't make big impact on me because I have still like the foray trigger there so I just like uh, destroyed uh, bronze mine get free food from the foray trigger and build iron in just like one civil action so it was it wasn't like it doesn't matter that much at the end if I had like free population or not because the only thing which was this to me were like two two rocks but I can say that I saved like one food because I was producing, uh, no, I didn't save any food. So it was like, it was like two, two rocks, so like ra uh, raiders or, or these cards. And I have Colosseum, I need more civil actions and I can see, I can see breakthrough on the line for one action. So I just like take breakthrough Republic. And if you will look at uh, my turn after I draw cards, I will not have even a corruption. So, very good for me. Yeah. And a very clean plan for the next turn. But the only thing which I was like not looking forward to was like if there will be like ocean liner or selective breeding, I will probably not have the opportunity to, to maybe just go for the revolution and maybe will need to grab these cards. But I don't know. There are also like some colonies in the deck. I have cartography. I think in this time I already have like five in boats in my cars like two plus two and one plus one so i'm like very well prepared for colonies bits yeah and you also have a lot of science and with a breakthrough um if you want to go for the republic normally that's yeah probably fine. that's that's i even didn't look for that because i'm not used to have that many science but <laughs> dj parson is helping me very very much with the scientific breakthrough after yeah. i elect the nobel and with also other Confucius events. Yeah, glad I could help. Um, I also would have really liked to have what, as Valmom said, he was uh, looking into the future and saw that I would have wanted that, but uh, sadly I won't be able to do that. I have a lot of science though, um, and I will decide to go for the Code of Laws first to get also space in my hand. 
and then I will go for the coal. Um, I could have gone for selective breeding first, obviously, um, but I decide that if I go for selective breeding first, I will have a lot of rocks. Uh, I will have a lot of food, but no rocks. Uh, so I want to prioritize the coal. Um, by the way, I also had to lose a population for the pestilence, but I can destroy just the mine. Uh, still going to be stuck on three food, so it doesn't change anything too much. Um, and uh, yeah, next turn I'm probably going to go for that selective breeding. But this turn is uh, it's time for coal. can use the rich land or the efficient upgrade. I will go with the rich land. And then next turn I can maybe upgrade again or go for select breedings. So I have a little bit of a plan where I can upgrade my production, which I think is pretty important at this stage. I think I'm pretty behind in a lot of regards. I'm the weakest. I suffered a little bit under the strength events and I didn't have a great production. My uh, two opponents have iron, so I felt like uh, I definitely needed an upgraded rock production to also put those rocks into the selective breeding because I also need food. Uh, so the one thing I had was science, which I could use to go for code and the coal, and then hopefully selective breeding next turn. And yeah, as uh, both of my opponents have just said, my Gutenberg isn't doing much anymore. And one thing that's great about the Forbidden City, we talked a lot about what's not great. One thing that is great, that with Darwin, uh, it can be a pretty nice combo. Um, because, yeah, you don't lose therapy phases there. I guess that's, that's the same as any others. Um, but yeah, getting the option to go for Darwin here, not having to lose any happy phase because I don't have any. Um, obviously, it doesn't work too well with my theology, uh, but for now I'm not having problems with having too much population that is unhappy, so I'm fine just going for Darwin and grabbing with my last civil action and urban growth. Could have also maybe grabbed team sports. There is no Pierre though. So just getting more rocks. I, I, at this point I felt like I needed all the rocks I could get. I still have a lot of rocks in my hand now and with the urban growth especially so. Uh, so I was pretty happy with this turn that I at least was able to get the coal even if I wasn't able to get what. And yeah, I still also have the new deposits in hand so maybe I can push that later when I have nine rock production so that could work nicely as well yeah it's a nice event to keep in hand when you're on bronze mines and then if you get the coal maybe you can get quite a big boost out of it yeah this turn i uh, see it again i'm the strongest i uh, am very happy that i have the knowledge about the rebellion that it is not in the deck and so i see that i see that the cold war i was confident to push it because there's a copy of rifleman that i can take this turn and with that i was hoping that i will may that i will be able to be one of the two strongest in the future and then a colony is revealed i think i had one colonization card in hand so i bit four but uh no that is not enough and payada wins it uh, with uh, having the cartography yeah, and I had uh, plenty of other cards which I can get there. I think I was like bidding something like six or eight for it, so it was quite cheap at the end. So I was happy, and I didn't have like any events cards, so I was like happy, like okay, so I will draw another three cards, so then I can like see and maybe get another colony. But I drew, I think, defensive army and two wars. And oh. before that, I even like d draw the fortifications. So like all the cannon tactics are not, like now in my hand. I still don't have a tactic, but there are like no cannons on the line. And I think DJ Parson already take one. No, no, no. They are still like both cannons in a deck. So I had like perfect cannon tactics in my hand and just like waiting for cannons. No, and at my turn, <clears throat> I think I have a relatively clean turn that I can go for. There is the selective breeding, as Payada said, um, we both want still a solution for our population and it would be a little bit risky to not take it. Payada could take it, maybe as the ocean liner service could be taken away. And uh, so I just want to make sure that I can get a solution now for, to get more population out. So I take the selective breeding and upgrading to it will also allow me to get out of corruption this turn. Uh, if I go for two upgrades and then when I do those two upgrades I have two civil actions left. I definitely want to have the rifleman. I have no H2 tactic in hand yet. Um, so I, no, I just want to have it in so that I'm better um, prepared or that I'm prepared for as many tactics as possible. And then I also take the team spots because I have no happy face solution yet. 
and uh, there's one copy of organized religion yet, uh, left in the deck but it could also be taken by both of you potentially and so I wanted to make sure that I have a happy face solution in hand and so I think that was at the end a relatively clean turn um, and I was happy that I can increase my food production now, get more population out. So I was in general relatively happy about my position, having a lot of civil and military actions and also quite a decent economy going on. Yeah, you have a very strong position. I would have been happy to have anything of that. Uh, yeah, you also get the team spot. So yeah, all your big problems are solved. Pretty good spot to be in. No, and actually the last thing that maybe wasn't solved will be solved at the end of my turn because I will draw three new cards and one of them is the classic army and I was very happy about that because that will allow me to go for more strength with the rifleman and that you know, is just very nice for me. Nice draw with the classic army. Good job. <laughs> Streamer draw. Yeah, so I didn't have any cards to push because if I had one, I will just push because there are like some colonies on the top. And yeah, I'm going for a Republic for like 11, full 11 science, which is like not very <laughs> usual for me. And then I have like so many civil actions that I will just take a lot of cards. And yeah, I'm interested in like yellow cards because they give me some value. I don't need rich land because the selective breedings bore are taken. So only like the patriotism from the middle line has some value for me. And I was already like a little bit like planning for the future with taking the rifleman and cavalryman for some like easy culture, uh, which I can get from the discount from Colosseum plus also maybe some Nobel prizes in the future. And I, I said it when I drew the drama that it is like useless card and now it is even more useless when I have opera as well. And because I have like plenty of rocks building the operas, if I will go for some, it will be much better than going for dramas because I can delay the decision to H3. Yeah, really a lot of card taking. Six cards in one turn is uh, yeah, pretty great going for the Republic and immediately using all of those civil actions uh, to grab some good cards. I, um, like I, that, I uh, think it's also a nice little synergy that you mentioned with the Colosseum Nobel Prizes. Uh, those uh, military techs are really cheap and then it can be uh, quite doable to go for a bunch of Nobel Prizes with those technologies. Yeah, true. Alright, so yeah, I decided not to push. I'm still the weakest. We had a, like a strength rush in the beginning, but now we're stuck at 10, 11 and 12. Nobody can really upgrade theirs. Uh, but I can grab another rich lane, so more rocks for me, which I'm really happy about. Uh, I will upgrade one more of my coal, grab another yellow card, the revolutionary idea. I get the cannon, so I just have to pay one civil action for that, thanks to Darwin. So I have my tactic fulfilled if I want that. Uh, and then with my last two civil actions, I will develop that selective breeding, because there's not much else to do. And then with the last selection, I'm even going to grab the navigation. Uh, I mean, I have one colony in hand. I think the one that I pushed is gone. But uh, yeah, there, there would maybe be a reason not to grab the navigation because uh, of my hand space. But I also have a lot of civil actions. Uh, I have a lot of yellow cards that are not going to get used very soon. So I have uh, no big problem with my hand space. So I just take the navigation. Um, and I can't really increase population to use my civil action there because then I would have a famine and uh, I don't want that obviously at this stage. So yeah, still slowly building up my uh, production. So I'm happy at least that I can do that, that nobody is uh, messing with my civilization with uh, a war or something. So I'm just glad that I can use my time to just upgrade my production a little bit. Yeah. Doing what upgrades without what? <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's a little bit slow, um, but yeah, what what can you do? No, at least at least Darwin is also doing a little bit, but now James Watt really would have been very nice for you. And this turn I'm still the strongest and I will again push and I see the civil unrest. I actually also still have the rebellion in hand and I will fix um, 
my happy face is just turn, but both of you at the moment have no happy face issues, so I just rather wanted to see the civil unrest because it gives me one more culture when I see it. And another colony is revealed, I still have one colonization card in hand, I was not willing to bid more than two, uh, one unit, and then again Payada is able to win it. Yeah, I'm really glad that the colonies are coming to to home, to the guy who seeded them, so this is how it should be. <laughs> No, there are three leaders left for me, all of them are on the row, and James Cook and Shakespeare aren't really doing that much for me. I mean, Shakespeare, maybe for the happy face, maybe if I get multimedia, but I think the best leader for me is Newton. Of course, he is available for three civil actions, so I could also wait for him for the next turn, but um, if I go for him now, I still get the civil action back, and I will also develop a technology, so I get another, another civil action back. So from the civil action cost, is actually the same if I get him for one at the next turn or for three now. Of course, I lose the value, I lose the value from, from Jan Shushka, but I also get two additional science production from, you, from Newton. And so at the end, I just went for Newton and copied the medieval army tactic with the military actions that I have from Jan Shushka. Then I can elect Newton. And I did consider uh, maybe now just developing the rifleman with Newton and like this getting out of corruption and then taking the ocean liner service away because it is really a very, very strong, wonderful Payada. And if I take it away, he could have some issues. But I think it's also not really something that I need for myself. And I think uh, you have to be careful to not uh, hate draft too much. Otherwise, it will also just hurt yourself. And I think that might be such, such a situation. I was hoping that I still have a decent position and maybe uh, still have good chances when Payada gets the ocean liner service um, and yeah, I just think it was just a lot of rocks that I would invest into that it would still help me a little bit but I don't really need it I think and so instead I did something else I developed a team sports um, I just think I will need the happy faces very soon anyway so I can also just build one right now and that gives me even another happy worker when I increase my population now I still have some resources left I have a bit of food production I will get more population so at this point I just made a decision to build a fourth farm a uh, fourth mine I mean with that I go up to eight resource production um, improving my economy a little bit more so I felt I was not totally certain if this mine will be worth it but I at the end thought it it might still be worth it and I can also can't do that much else I can also just not build this mine maybe take something like the engineering genius but at the moment I don't really have a wonder that I want to go for and so I just invested into this iron hoping that I am no, that I don't need a population elsewhere at some point, that it will pay off for itself. And then with the last civil action, I will take the cannons. I don't need this really for myself. I have the classic army. I mean, it can still be nice for H3 tactics, but it definitely also was a bit of a hate draft. And I actually think it might be one that has some consequences because Payada said that he has some nice cannons tactics. So, uh, yeah. Now. And there is more hate draft than you even like see, you know, at least the ocean line was line of service is there to <laughs> hate after the cannon and also like DJ Parson by like taking plenty of cards in his turn took away the scientific method from me ah. which is also like not great because you already had one so it would be like for one CA for me and with Nobel there's like another way to a victory so at the end I was at least like happy that I will have the ocean liner service because if both like ocean liner, liner service and scientific method will be not there, I will not see like any like reasonable path for me, except of like early mechanized agriculture or maybe early computers. So this way it looks much better for me. And also like I will build the ocean liner first turn in like H3. So it will not be like the strongest ocean liner this I will get probably like, I don't know, six population from it, maybe seven, but still good. Yeah, so I, I, I pushed and get another colony. So now I'm already at three colonies. So at least it looks like that I'm catching a little bit. And also like with plenty of civil actions and a lot of rocks from the wealthy one and that I'm like able to take a lot of yellow cards every turn. I was like feeling quite okay. And perfect perfect time to transition my... to your fortifications, right? Yeah, and it we... doesn't work, but at least I know that uh, I think that I even like keep just like defensive army in my hand because I was like still thinking that having these swordsmen 
defensive is better than just like going for only like a cannons tactic because it will at least like allow it for you. So yeah, I I think that at, at this point I'm still like keeping the defensive army in my hand, but at least I will go for for knights and maybe in H3 I will have my first tactic. I don't know. Maybe. Still like playing it without tactics and having no problems with it because we are like keeping our strength still at this 10, 12, 11s ratio. So all good. And I will just build ocean liner with my four civil actions and then probably like take some cards. The card row. Yeah. To have just like more options. Yeah, for pretty instance. good turn to use all of those rocks, get the ocean under going. Um, yeah, as you said, definitely needed for you to get more population here after not getting the scientific method or anything. So yeah, I'm not the weakest now. I think I might, yeah, I'm going to push the territory. I'm going to open still one of our computer's cards. So we haven't pushed too much uh, in the last couple of turns. Um, but I have navigation, so I pushed colony in. Um, then I will use my turn to upgrade some more. Uh, obviously, I would have minus one food if I didn't upgrade the, the farm. Now I'm starting to run into problems with my uh, happy faces. I do have the two ignored workers, but even the next population that I get is not going to be happy. Uh, so that is a little bit problematic for me. Yeah, because that means I can't build an extra farm and just having one food production isn't really uh, going to be enough. But I can upgrade one more coal uh, and then decide against it, as I just said. Yeah, it, uh, I could have gotten more rocks, um, but what I really need is more population because, as I said, the next one is going to be un unhappy and then it's going to take a long, long turns to get a new population. So we'll use this uh, worker. I I think I thought I would go for an extra farm. Okay, <laughs> maybe I should stop pretending like I know what's gonna happen and just. Maybe uh, we're influenced by Darwin. He, he likes some journalism. <laughs> yeah, Darwin making. I thought yeah. this was what maybe. what would have built a a, a, um, a farm, but yeah. Yeah, and now you can see that I think both of you are like producing plus seven science, and I'm just like on plus four. So my Nobel prizes doesn't look very well. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah. So at least I get up to six culture production thanks to Darwin. I go up to seven science. Um, will also allow me to go for these great yellow, uh, these great blue uh, cards that I have, the strategy and the navigation. Um, still not going to solve my food, but there is a reserve. So I think I'm now going to grab some yellow cards, the reserves, and also the urban growth um, so that I can use the reserves next turn and get almost two population and one of them will be will be happy um, still no heavy face solution which is definitely an issue now um, the organized religion is going to get disca uh, discarded and we, then we only really have the pro sports um, and maybe Marlene but Marlene is out already I guess there's also Steve Jobs um, but yeah for him I would need computers so happy faces are definitely a little bit of an issue for me now um, and yeah, I don't get too many too many work production because I have to destroy that one mine to do so. Um, but at least I get my culture production up. And draw some of my no. first impacts. And at my turn, I want to help Payada scoring more Nobel prizes, but sadly he uh, declines uh, the pack that I offer to him. And uh, now, which is maybe also a good decision because uh, having the scientific cooperation pact uh, to get um, and many other players, Newton is always a little bit dangerous. I was hoping that maybe Payada would accept it because he has a bit of science saved up, some cheap technologies in hand, and um, I also uh, considered it offering it to DJ Parsons. So I wasn't really certain. Um, DJ Parsons has better production, but not as much science saved up, and. Um, it was a really close decision for me. I was a little bit afraid that maybe with having Darwin, with having some resource lying around, DJ Parson could more easily 
uh, be able to go for computers and then maybe he could even get a lot out of this pact so I was felt like maybe that could be a little bit dangerous but it was a really close decision at the end I uh, offered it to Payada I was not really certain if he would accept it um, but uh, I still tried it and uh, the alternative could have been to see to have the popularization of science in hand but at this point I felt who knows one of my uh, one of uh, you could get the computers and then that could turn out to be quite bad for me at the end so it could be a little bit risky to see it and also the top event is from Payada and I felt like one event that maybe could be there is the rats and I didn't like that too much to be revealed now if that should be the case because it could be quite nice to have one more population out that I can maybe uh, build, put into something like movies or the multimedia soon so I also didn't want to risk opening that event so I instead tried to offer the pact and then I will go for this early oil I think I have some nice science production it's still very early in H3 so I think that can give me quite a nice boost there's also Marie Curie in the game I can go for an upgrade going up to 11 resource production I will take the military theory which is a little bit of a hate draft because I think it would be quite a strong card for Payada but it can also be useful for myself maybe I I can also still go for a military plan there will be the cold war which i hopefully will be able to win and then i have quite a bunch of science and can maybe invest into military theory and potentially also with the additional military action go for war myself and so it helps myself but i definitely also had in mind that payada would really like to have this military theory and then with the last civil action i considered the frugality because that would allow me to get two more population out at the next turn but i as i said was a little bit afraid that rats might be the top event and uh then i at the end instead just increased my population so that i have one population out for certain and that i then can maybe put somewhere with the resource production that i have now yeah. Yeah, reds in H three can always be very mm -hmm. problematic. Um, yeah, and, or even reds in H four, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I didn't accept the the scientific pact because if you look at my civilization, I don't need like to research like many texts because. I'm a little bit like behind in culture, so I will definitely like go for some like operas. Now even when you guys give me like the Marlon Dietrich, which can help me like with happy faces. And also I'm not like feeling super safe with now wait bomb having the military theory. So I will watch my back and yeah, I see it, I don't know which card. But this colony, I didn't want to, to have it because I already have like three colonies and I just like opted like, okay, so maybe some of you will at least get rid of his like defense cards and maybe I will get some juicy colonies later on. And Vader Bomb did it. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to win it. Uh, it might actually turn out bad for me. I, uh, I mean, I have a bunch of colonization cards in hand at this point. I was not too certain if I should... I uh, want to have this territory. I think the happy face is actually quite useful for me, but uh, the problem is I'm now the weakest and I have knowledge about one strength event, which is the Cold War. There could potentially be more, so I was uh, not too convinced if I should really risk it to be the weakest. On the other hand, the uh, happy face is somewhat useful. Also, the six culture at this point are, is definitely not nothing. And so at the end, I was willing to bid this warrior and two cards. I don't think I was willing to bid all of my cards. Um, uh, but I was not too certain and I was now quite afraid that uh, uh, Cold War might be revealed before my turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in my turn I just like went for like one opera to just try to produce some culture to be like in in a range of you two because you are like producing I think, more, more culture than me or at least like DJ Parson has pretty nice culture production with, mm -hmm. with Darwin and then I just continued in like taking all the yellows which I can like spot and at the end I also like decided to take that Marlon Dietrich because I can like use her and I opted to like not not to use it now because I don't have like the selection for it if you have Nobel Prize you need like one more selection for electing the leader but I will not need it her very soon I still have like some time before uh, putting it to the play because like two science from Nobel is like much more valuable for me and also I would like 
to postpone the Nobel Prize as much as possible, or maybe not even like give it giving it to you because you have like plenty of science, so maybe Nobel will die by normal death without any prizes. And yeah. then I have option to copy the tactic, but I refuse to because drawing three cars is much better than just drawing one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I'm still having that defensive army in hand and still like looking for rockets, and they are like nowhere to see. No rockets. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the pickup of Marlena, definitely having the option to go into culture production. You also took the frugality, which I like a lot. You can get a lot of population next turn three population in one turn and then you even have a lot of rocks in hand with the urban growth and everything um so yeah, i i like that a lot having all of these yellow cards but what i also really like is uh, some cards that have shown up for me which is mandela and pro sports which come down the row and when mom does get punished for his uh for his colony because war. <laughs> finally some luck for me and payar in the event stack both of us getting the six science yeah. I was a bit unhappy about uh, um, winning this territory now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You, you, you forgot for a while that you were playing against the streamers, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's one of, the yeah. of course, it's the first card on top. Uh, where streamers are thrown. And I'm kind of happy as well that I didn't take the uh, colony, because then I couldn't really go for Mandela. But now I can increase population, and then I can also grab the pro sports of course first the pro sports with the was just one civil action from darwin and then i can go for mandela as well uh, elect him immediately and put my population to good use getting up to uh, four happy bases so now as payada said at the beginning uh, if the forbidden city would have given happy faces i would get even more culture production from uh, from mandela but now obviously i only have the four happy phases so just one from mandela at this point i will then destroy warrior to build uh first i go for the strategy and then i build the pro sports so after all the happy phases from forbidden city will now be useless but at least i get uh two pro sports uh took up to eight happy phases and produce five extra culture with mandela so mandela is giving me two plus five so seven culture from him so I think this is a really, really good turn for me, solving all of my heavy face issues that I had quite a lot of, um, getting also a lot of strength. So um, eight strength from the pro sports now makes me the strongest by quite a bit. Uh, so I'm really happy with this turn for me. Finally seeing some light uh, here, having having gone up in civil action some more, and of course uh, the culture production. No, and no, you have really a nice monarchy going on now with getting the strategy and Mandela. So I think yeah, this turn definitely improved your position quite a bit. Yeah, true. Yeah. Then at my turn, I won't push. I um, could still see the popularization of science. I don't think I've drawn an impact yet, but I have drawn the modern army tactic. But for that, I would need to invest a lot of science. So, but maybe uh, it could potentially be useful. And uh, there is Marie Curie in the row, and she is quite a nice leader together with this oil. Newton is also still giving me some decent value, but I think Marie Curie will be stronger, so I will take her. And before I will elect her, I will still make use out of Newton one last time, developing the rifleman. I still have the classic army tactic in hand. I will also use the one free military action that I have and upgrade uh, one warrior to rifleman. And after that, I will make the switch to Marie Curie. She gives me some nice uh, science, culture, and science and culture production also some additional strength i will still go for the second upgrade to oil i think it still might uh, um, pay for itself and um, so i still go for that one and then i have some civil actions left and then with having that much production i need something that i can invest that into and so i will take the movies in hand i already have the opera but I don't have the most population, so I think the movies will be a nice upgrade for me. There's also the Hollywood, so just getting more culture production out of less workers might be quite important. And then I also took the Air Forces at the end. I also thought about the tank setting up for the modern army, but as I said, I sadly now that I missed out in the Cold War, I have some decent science production, but to go for all of those technologies, movies, and then also cannons, tanks, and then maybe also Air Forces on top, uh, that might just be um, 
an amount of science that I don't have uh, that I won't have available, and so I rather opted to go for just uh, classic armies with air forces. But if I get a lot of science or maybe some revolutionary ideas, who knows? Maybe there will be a second copy of tanks that I can take at some point. But like this, I have just a very strong res resource production going on now. At the next turn, I will get a population in two turns. Another one. I have those movies in hand, so I can maybe just invest into those and convert my economy peacefully. I don't have a war in hand yet, so. I don't want to try to go for a lot of military or something like that, so I no, I thought that with having those movies I have no a nice way how I can approach the next turns. I like the synergy that Vedebaum is like taking all the technology cards and I'm taking all the yellow cards. <laughs> <laughs> nice teamwork. <laughs> and because if you will see my hand, you will see just like plenty of yellow yeah, all true. the time this yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, so I think that I didn't see did anything and I just like built more operas and also go for the like free population in one turn with the frugality and plenty of colonies. And then I took another a lot of other yellow cards and I think also like the mechanized agriculture to just like fix my food production maybe in the last turn or when I will need it because I'm still like without any danger of not enough food and have the ocean liner for extra population. Yeah. And I needed also to build uh, one more cavalry man to just like that it looks like that I'm like able to defend because may maybe you will not go f for aggressions against me, but I think that I don't have like any defense cards in hand. So this was just like a good thing. So I think, yeah, I think even now, like if DJ Parson attack me, I have like no, no defense, but so I'm still like keeping the defensive army in hand as like, as it is like uh, the defense card, so he doesn't know and don't attack me. Yeah, I mean, it's relatively unlikely that it would go through. Yeah. So a little bit of bluffing is always fine, I think. And you can always like draw, draw that like defense card from the, from the free draws. Exactly. You know, if, yeah. if you don't have like enough strength, you can just be lucky and draw it. Yeah. I think no. it's uh, like 20% that you will just like draw a defense card in free draws. Yeah. No, I, I'm, definitely also, I'm definitely also uh, bluffing quite often and in one of my recent world championship games I think I wasn't able to defend for like five or six turns <laughs> in a row but and didn't get punished for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Always try aggressions on Weinbaum. He can never. Offend. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we need to change his playstyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, I still agree with not going for Marlene yet, Payada. I think uh, the two signs is still better for now, and the also not giving the uh, Nobel prizes out yet. So uh, I, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, and I, I don't need like to develop any text in, uh, except of rackets for the defensive army, but not, not even now, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. So I have a lot of impacts. I think I'm gonna play one of them. Uh, let's find out here. Yeah, Impact of Wonders, and I will open the civil unrest, but yeah, this one, as so often, is uh, not really eventful, nothing happens. Yeah, and then uh, I, I, sometimes it can feel, for me at least, when, when you go for Mandela and you have all your happy faces, uh, sometimes it can be hard to to know what to do after that. Like you fulfilled your mission to get as many ha happy faces as possible, uh, but I didn't really have any other culture text. I could have gone for movies, but they are probably too expensive. Uh, so I just grabbed the revolutionary idea um, there's some more really, really expensive yellow cards, but I will go for the democracy here. Grab the military buildup, um, play reserves for food, and can then maybe increase population. Yeah. So I leave one revolutionary idea on the deck. Uh, could have thought about maybe not doing that, um, but then I think I couldn't have grabbed the democracy. Um, and I think leaving one revolutionary idea here, while everybody has quite a bit of science production, uh, Weidmann is probably going to take it and he has uh, 8 science production so I think it's fine leaving the revolutionary idea of 3 um, but yeah just making sure that I have enough rocks I have the wave and the military build up so nobody can really attack me at this point I have the cannon for my tactic uh, and so the hope is that I can get the democracy next turn um, and maybe build another journalism or something like that and maybe set up for a good wonder 
Uh, there's still quite a few of them left. Uh, even though yeah, some of them are hard to use. I can't really go for Hollywood. Internet is gone already, so... Really only Empire State Building, maybe a little bit. Manhattan Project can be okay. But yeah, as I said, can it felt a little bit like I wasn't really sure where to go with this game at this point. No, that uh, can be a bit of an issue with Mandela, and uh, I think now it is a little bit of a problem for you that you maybe don't have the most population uh, to uh, put into any buildings, um, but maybe you can build some more journalism at the following turns. Yeah, definitely. I think you are doing a good thing, you know, you just like don't pop too often to have like more 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 culture right so you are like <laughs> to, to nelson's thing true yeah yeah always uh, look at it from the positive this turn i finally uh, seeded an event that i could have already pushed earlier this time i'm not the weakest and i see the popularization of science uh, we are a bit later in h3 so we we're hoping that maybe uh, both of you won't invest into a lot of uh, science production, also the event will be revealed relatively soon at the moment. I have the most science production, I also don't have an impact in hand yet, so that was just the best event to push. And there's the strategic territory on top, and uh, as I said, I don't have any impacts in hand yet, but with my nice economy I thought there might, might be some nice impacts that I could draw, and so I was willing to bid quite a bit uh, for this colony. Um, and I think that was also the maximum amount that I was willing to bid an army with a rifleman and a knight and a colonization card. It is quite costly, but at least the colony gives me some strength back. I was hoping that I will have enough resources to not uh, get punished. I can always hopefully threaten to go for a classic army tactic with air force. And uh, now, now I get a lot of draws. Sadly, I was not too happy about those draws. I have now some wars in hand, but I think there's just not enough time left for me to build up a really strong war. I thought if I about it, if I maybe could pull it off, but I just felt a little bit too uncertain. And the only impact that I draw is the impact of strength. And if I don't uh, go for um, a military push, then that one may be also not that easy to pull off. So I wasn't too happy about the draws, but I will also get more draws at the end of my turn. And then maybe I have another chance chance to get some impacts. And instead of going for a military push, I thought it could now be nice to start going for movies. I can build one that will get me out of corruption. I will take the engineering this turn, so it could have maybe also been nice to build a movie with the engineering, but I don't have enough science for the engineering this turn, and I also didn't want to delay the movie. I have a lot of resource anyway, so I was hoping that it can maybe be fine to build this one movie without the engineering. And then I think I really can use some additional science. I think that's actually quite important so that I can threaten to go for military theory or air forces so that I'm not too vulnerable. And I also wanted to have the engineering. There's also the reserves, but I think if I build some more movies, the engineering will save me more resources. It's also nice for some impacts. And hopefully with the revolutionary idea, I will have enough science to support it. I can develop it at the next turn. And then with the revolutionary idea and the science production, I can still threaten to go for air forces at the following turn. So. My plan was just to build as many movies as possible. There is the Hollywood as a wonder still in the game. So I was hoping that maybe I could get that one, especially because it might also be a strong one for Payada. But if I don't get the Hollywood, the Empire State Building is also not looking that bad for me with having uh, that uh, strong economy. And uh, no, But I was uh, hoping more for the Hollywood because then I would not only get a nice one of myself, but also deny one from Payada who not that easily can go for the Empire State Building. No, that would be sad. You will have Empire State and I will have Hollywood, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have like now two impacts in my hand. One is like impact of progress, which is like not great for me because DJ Parson has like plenty of blue techs already developed and Vader Bomb is like holding all the tech possible in hand as well. So, so at least good for me that it will not be seeded and the other one is like impact of science which is also like quite bad for me so luckily i still have like h2 i think inhabited territory from h2 in hand so i just like seeded that card and this was like my nice sur surprise card which i like didn't spoil earlier <laughs> and it came in the great moment after wade mount built his movies so even when his like rock production is quite high i think like just taking 11 rocks from him is not bad and then 
I was also like very happy to see Hollywood on a line, so I just like went for grabbed opera, grab Hollywood, and then I think I have maybe one space in my hand and my selection, so I probably took reserves. And that was my turn. Still postponing of the election of Marlon Dietrich and yeah, piling up my science. <laughs> yeah. No. I think the terrorism was definitely quite impactful, losing this movie, I definitely wasn't happy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that I have like some strength events in a deck, something like, phew, I think, uh, the international negotiations and maybe something else, so I, at the end I just like opted to get stronger than you to be like the strongest one. So copying the tactic in something like round 13 or so. Or so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, costly, costly military actions. But uh, yeah, but yeah, Weinbaum denied you the military theory, so you're stuck with your three MAs. Uh, just wanted At least to... the other one is still in the deck, yeah. yeah. I uh, just want to say, you of course destroyed my journalism, which I'm also not too happy about because I don't have two oils like Weinbaum, so... Not quite as costly as the movies, but for me, it's uh, still very, very costly. Um, but yeah, I think also at some point, maybe Electra Malena, uh, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see at what, at what point exactly you're going to do it. Um, but uh, I think the point is coming where the three culture is going to be better than the two science. Um, but I guess you also wanted to be the strongest, so you kept, you kept Nobel for now. Yes, yeah, that, that was the reason. And also it's like saving me one civil action and I have like these reserves in hand and I think have, being like last seed, having like more options yeah. is great. Yeah. And other, other crazy thing is that like I, I was looking maybe at the start of H3 for something like computers or so, but I think like at the end of my turn there were like still no computers, still no multimedia and just like 18 cards. Yeah. In the deck. yeah. Yeah, well, I also don't really have good impacts, and part of culture is definitely not gonna be good for me. Most of my culture comes from the bonus, which doesn't count for the impact, and then input technology could be okay against Payade at least, but Weinbaum with this big science production, and uh, yeah, I don't really have a lot of um, technologies from H3 yet, especially because I think I'm gonna go for the democracy which is one big technology from H3, but it only counts for culture for the input of technology as well. Um, but yeah, I will go up to six culture production with that, which is uh, pretty nice. I can even get that revolutionary idea that I didn't take in the last turn. I get it now for one selection, which is really, really good. Uh, and then, yeah, I was looking at the wonders and saw that there's only the Manhattan Project, which I now take, and the Empire State, and Empire State isn't really good for me. So I decided to take the Manhattan Project this turn and then rebuild one of my journalism. So the idea is uh, I can use the Manhattan Project defensively and if if not, if strength doesn't matter at the end, at least I get a little bit of culture from it from the, from the science production. Um, but yeah, overall, once again, I'm not sure. I, it doesn't really seem like I can use my military. I drew that mobile artillery in the first turn of H2 uh, and I still haven't really gone for it or used it at all. Um, most because I don't have population as we've pointed out. Um, I do have warper culture but I didn't really see an opportunity to go against uh, either of these guys. Um, Bindbaum just too many rocks in hand, Payada, uh, too many yellow cards in hand and Malena. So uh, yeah, not, not so easy for me. I feel relatively safe with my military build up and wave. Um, so I'm generally pretty sad that I only get the Manhattan Project and not a wonder that can really do much for me. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure if if I could go for the Empire State Building at all. So I decided to just take the one wonder that I can go for right now. And then I actually even go for the cannons. Because, uh, yeah, not much else to do, I guess. I guess maybe I could have gone for an upgrade. Maybe I wasn't sure if I would keep the cannon. Um, there would be a possibility that all 14 cards are gone and then wouldn't be able to go for that anymore. But maybe unlikely. Yeah, yeah taking so many cards that it may even like end like in like 16 turns or something. Yeah. So this game is be like pretty short. Yeah. 
Yeah, at my turn, I sadly still don't have an uh, impact in hand apart from impact of strength, but I have one card in hand that I can use, and that is the international tourism that I will offer to Payada. Um, Thank you very I, much. <laughs> this, this time you will accept. I was happy about it. I also considered offering it to DJ Parson because Payada, um, we have the same amount of wonders, we have the same amount of turns that we get the production, but I will probably, uh, or I was hoping that I had my last turn, maybe we'll finish the Empire State Building so Payada gets one culture more out of it. Uh, but if I offer to DJ Parson, I wasn't certain if. Uh, if you would accept it, because uh, there are not that many turns left, and I get an additional turn of production, so I at the end offered it to Payada, and like this, we both get a little bit of additional culture production. And then I also um, no, I was unhappy about this terrorism, but one nice thing is at least that I can um, uh, build those movies a little bit cheaper, so I'm actually not really losing 11 resource. I mean, I lose, uh, lose my investment of 11 resource, but I can rebuild it for 8 resources and uh, build one movie and then I have still eight resources left and can potentially even build another movie and that is also what I will do. I thought about maybe trying to get a little bit stronger um, because Payada with his moves of copying the tactic using all of his military actions kind of indicated that um, there might be some strength events coming but the movie is just giving me four culture immediately and uh, so I didn't want to build a knight or something like this and then with my last three civil actions I will just take the reserves. I think having the reserves could be important because if I don't have it, I'm just at 14 resources and then I would be one short of going for another night rifleman in air forces. So who knows, maybe if, if there's military theory, uh, Payada out of the sudden could uh, maybe go for a war. So I, uh, I think I need one of those yellow cards, either patriotism or reserves to not be too much in danger. And no, like this, I just set up, set up a lot of culture production and also make sure that I can still defend myself. But I was a little bit afraid of strength events. Yeah, I think I like the reserves okay. for the flexibility. Yeah, and, and you, you will keep some yellow cards for me as well. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody likes it. Yeah, I was a little bit mad about uh, about the pact. International tourism in a three-player game is a very, very uh, crazy pact. Uh, and it's so sad to not yeah, be a part unfair. of it. Um, yeah, no. And I have to say, there's like 10 cards in H3 deck and still no computers, no <laughs> multimedia, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I also revealed a classic army with my last military action because the age might very likely end before my next turn and then uh, if I don't reveal it now I could get into trouble. So will we see some computers finally? I think we will. Yeah. So I'm not pushing because I have just two packs in hand. One is uh, Impact of Science and the other is uh, Impact of Progress. The Impact of Progress I will not see it, no matter what probably. And Impact of Science yeah, I, I can see the impact of science because now I can take like two efficient upgrades and if there will be like one computers left because there are like still two in a deck or one for now to grab it for free CAs, then I can get, go to plus 10 science and if I do this as my last action in a turn, I can get like some nice boost for science. I think I was thinking that like Vaidenbaum is like the that I'm like fighting with Vaidenbaum for the first place and DJ Parson is a little bit behind but not by much. I also was like looking if I can NDH this round and I think it didn't work by like one CA or something because I was like trying to develop uh, the civil service and just like then take all the cheap cards to hand but it doesn't work maybe even like by two two selections so we will play two more turns so i just like make that plan with the efficient upgrades and computers maybe to use for the next round but i will not definitely like now see this uh, the impact of science and go for that blindly Yeah. So this was my plan, and I also elect the Nobel and develop two techs to get the Nobel Prize. Yeah, I was very happy that Vedebaum revealed that nice tactic, so I was not feeling in big danger. Because there are, like, I think, still second Air Forces as well in the deck, or 
Yeah, I think the last one is still in. Yeah. yeah. We are never safe without air forces. <laughs> like, and I, I think I drew some like nice cars, but I will talk about them in my last turn. Yeah, I, I was wondering about what you said before that you think uh, because I think I agree that my position still is very slippery because of wonders. Um, so yeah, I definitely, definitely felt that. Um, which is also why I wasn't sure why Weinbaum. Uh, maybe you can let let us in on that. Why you went the pact with Payada when you you said one more culture? But if you offered that to me, I would have not produced. Uh, so I think for you it would have been very good if I had accepted yeah, that. No? You, you are playing before Weidenbaum, so he was like afraid that you will not accept it because he will get like one more turn. Yeah, yeah. Situation. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess I would have had to think about it. Um, but yeah, my, maybe it was more likely that you, Payada, would accept it. That's true. No, and I think uh, you also, uh, Payada, depending on how much cards I and Payada take, the H could end, and if the H should end immediately, then uh, I think you would just get two culture out of it, and I would get five culture out of it, and then maybe that's a difference where you maybe say you won't accept it. Maybe mm -hmm. I should have still tried it, um, but uh, I... Uh, at the end, was maybe too afraid that you would not accept the pact. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so yeah, now it's my turn. We have, as Peter said, one more round to go after this one. Um, I will push and I will open the inhabited. Of course, I would have been very happy to win this one uh, because uh, I have Mandela and he would then have given me more culture production. But sadly, Piyado also really, really wanted this. Um, Winning it for oh, I plus. just have a lot, lot of defense cards in hand. So oh, maybe that, yeah. Just the, the basic bit of like one unit plus all you have in hand. Yeah. So a little bit, uh, yeah, very good for you, I guess. Um, then I have the same problem. Uh, I would have lost the mobile artillery if I don't play it now, so I will reveal it. Um, and then I have a lot of cards to grab as well, but first I can still use my wave nationalism. Um, could have also used the military build-up, but I keep that in hand still. But of course, the wave of nationalism would have get uh, would have gotten discarded. So using that one this time to build a cannon and go up to 24 strength, and then I try to be Payada and grab as many yellow cards as I can. Yeah. Patriotism. But you didn't you didn't stop with that, and you will make the computers disappear as with scientific methods. So no, yeah. <laughs> my plan with impact of science is gone. <laughs> Yeah, I take a lot of cards here, so uh, yeah, yeah, my yeah, my idea was take as many cards as possible. Um, definitely end the age, so Biden and Payada don't draw new impacts. Um, and yeah, at least em Empire State Building will take uh, cost one more one more selection for Biden Bomb. Yeah, at least <laughs> there is like nothing to grab, so we will have. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So yeah, with that H four will start. No, and this uh, turn I finally have an impact that I can see. It's sadly not the best one, but definitely one uh, that is seedable, the impact of variety. Uh, the other one that I have in hand is still the impact of strength. I could have also maybe said I said that I will wait with uh, seeding and then I can maybe um, seed it at the next turn when I have a little bit more information. But I thought maybe there's a world where I can still push the impact of strength. I won't get stronger than DJ Parson very likely, but maybe I can find a turn or depending on what Payada does where I get stronger than Payada and then depending on how this culture scores at the end maybe I would be willing to see that while only being the second strongest so I wanted to push the impact of variety now so that I can also use my last politics phase and then at my turn I think I have to grab the Empire State Building now that will give me hopefully a nice amount of culture and if I don't grab it now it will be discarded before my next turn so that is four civil actions that I have to do uh, definitely then I increase my population with that I get out of corruption and then one question was do I want to take this copy of reserves so I had to uh, see if that maybe allows me to do some more stuff 
but it doesn't really, and especially because I have not enough civil actions. There's uh, some stuff that I want to do at the next turn. I won't develop any technology this turn so that I can go for Nobel Prize, but I need to, would need to play the reserves, revolutionary idea, both of the technologies at the next turn, and then I have only two civil actions left. Uh, so taking the reserves uh, doesn't really do anything for me. I still uh, considered it because maybe it could help Hayada. So I took a look at his civilization, and at the moment he has enough resources to build a multimedia and still finish the Hollywood. And uh, but that will actually not change with the reserves. He has then not enough resource to build two multimedias or something like this. So I thought it's not necessary to take that. And I rather should just focus on my own and for myself. The reserves isn't really doing that much. So I just build another movie that gives me the additional cash reduction already this turn. And then I uh, considered something like just playing revolutionary idea, having more civil actions at the next turn. But I thought the computers might still be quite useful for me because um, I uh, ideally want to make the Empire State Building as big as possible. I think the resource production I should have very safe. Food production is looking good at the moment. Payada could potentially, with the sufficient upgrades, maybe go for mechanized agriculture the next turn. Then that could potentially get a little bit worse. Um, and the science production I have at the moment, but DJ Parson has the Manhattan Project, and he, even if he finishes that, has still some resource left. He could build an additional journalism, maybe, and that would produce some culture and give him more culture for the Manhattan Project, so I thought it might be quite likely uh, that you will do that, and then you would be at nine, but with the computers, I have the option to maybe develop it at the next turn, and with one upgrade, I would be at 10, and then I would still have enough. Uh, to get uh, the bonus from the Empire State Building. Sadly, I think you have enough resource to even build a journalism and an HA lab, but um, uh, I was hoping that maybe you won't do this because you don't have a lot of repopulation. So I still wanted to at least the, uh, to have the option to maybe uh, be prepared for that and uh, maybe it forces you to build the lab even though you maybe don't want to do it and it also is a little bit of value at least. And uh, yeah, so I uh, took the computers at the end. I didn't really have in mind that it maybe actually uh, hurts Payada a lot. I uh, just thought uh, Payada will go for multimedia, uh, but now with the impact of science, uh, that actually will also be uh, hurtful now for Payada that I take this option away to go um, uh, to go for computers. And uh, no, so at the next turn, I, I can finish the Empire State Building, and then I have enough resource to maybe build a religion, increasing my chances to potentially have enough culture for the Empire State Building, and also I would have enough resource to also go for upgrade to uh, computers to maybe also allow me to win the science for the Empire State Building. Yeah, sounds sounds like a plan, I guess. I also I also considered going for some strength maybe somehow because I have the impact of strength in hand, but I just didn't really find a nice way to do it. It just felt too costly. And so sadly, I very likely won't push at the next turn unless Payada maybe starts deleting all of his units. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't that unhappy that the computers are gone because if... I now have like the opportunity to build like one multimedia. It will give me like nine culture, like two times from culture production and one time from Hollywood. So I was not that, not that bad for me. And I drew some like nice impacts in my last, in my previous turn. And this is the impact which I seeded and it was like impact of colonies. And by revealing this card, which I also like prepared to the deck, I take took uh, three rocks from Vedemoun and give it to DJ Parson, mainly to just like shorten his options, what he can like do in his turns to make like usage of Empire State building the most awkward as it could be. And I also like used one very nice trick that I will build one religion to just have the same culture production as Vadenbaum. Because if you like finish the Empire State uh, building and you also have like the tourist pact, the plus one culture production goes to your opponent immediately. So if uh, now Vadenbaum don't have like enough rocks uh, to nothing else, then just like I think building uh, the building the empire stake he will not be able to get like the plus eight culture from 
from that wonder. And then I just like optimize what I can do to have like the biggest uh, input of culture in this game. And I also like take the air forces and the reserves to just show you that you can like play the final round without like any cards on a card row, which rarely happened. I think this happened like for the first time <laughs> in my life that there are like no cards, even like for the first player in, in the last round. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's true. Uh, so many cards taken. Everybody has so many civil actions. Uh, but very interesting point that you made about the Empire State. I didn't know that. That's a very interesting interaction that the tourism counts that before comparing. So very interesting indeed. Yeah, that's what was, was also interesting. It was also interesting for me, and uh, what also what I also didn't know is that there is actually a reminder if uh, when I when I did click on the Empire State Building when I played the game, there you can see which categories you win uh, and uh, how much I still need. And uh, sadly, you don't see it now in the replay. But if you play the game, then you see it. And there was actually a reminder that uh, for the culture production, the International Tourism Pact is already included uh, into this calculation. How much you need for culture so that was also something that i didn't knew before yeah, yeah, yeah. wow so i thought like we will need like three rocks for extra religion to get to 20 but when he will finish the empire state building i will be at 20 as well no. so it will be a tie so so smart <laughs> and this is this is nice that the app reminds you about like this yeah. quarter case yeah pretty crazy that they saw that coming uh, ahead uh, pretty pretty good programming cge well done so yeah, I with my last uh, politics, I have only the input of harmony, um, industry and technology. I think the technologies, I, I thought, uh, I, I don't know the numbers now, we could count them, but I definitely was uh, crunching my numbers to see who would benefit from what, because it was also so uncertain. If you take a look at the culture on 95, 98 and 97, I was very, very uncertain who my opponent would be. I was pretty sure I wouldn't come in first uh, because both of them would get wonders, uh, but it was really hard for me to puzzle out uh, who I thought was uh, more in reach for me, uh, because the input of technology I think would have been very, very good for Weidenbaum, um, and some others would have been very good for Payada. So at the end, I decided to uh, push the input of technology and I opened the input of government, which gave me quite a lot. 25 for the input of government and then 18 and 19. So I take the lead now for, for a little while. Um, sadly, also, that wasn't the one that I wanted to open with the civil service. Now I even get one more. Uh, civil actions, so I'm ending my game with 11 civil actions, so I could have gotten an even better input of government, uh, but yeah, I revealed that a little bit too early. Then I used Revolutionary Idea and can go for the Modern Infantry, so I will get two technologies, win the Nobel Prize. And something that's very interesting for me is I have the input of Industry and the input of Harmony, so I know that I can destroy these mines, they are not really doing anything for me, uh, at least the one. There is, of course, variety, and then I use that to build the library. I can also destroy um, a knight, because here it's the same case. Um, I know that I have the harmony. I'm still the strongest. There could be competition, but I'm pretty good with that anyway, thanks to the pro sports. And then I will do what Weidenbaum was afraid of. I will build the extra alchemy here, uh, meaning that I'm on 11 science production, and Weidenbaum will hopefully struggle with getting as much from the Empire State Building. Yeah, and I think uh, the coal mine is not counted for impact of variety, but you at least has a better balance, I would say. True, I learned that like my, on my last stream, <laughs> but I already forgot that. Um, true, Harmony, for, for those who don't know, like me and who keeps forgetting, uh, does not count your... Uh, uh, variety does not count your um, mine and farm um, so you don't get those um, and then with my last civil actions I get the reserves I finish the main project use the patriotism yeah, you're the Oppenheimer voice yeah, <laughs> yeah true 
Uh, and then I used my military build up without getting anything from it, but ending on 93. So, uh, yeah, not too much for my one. I think that is one big problem I had this game in the end with... Uh, I mean, I get 11 culture at least from the Manhattan Project, which is at least something, but uh, not as much as Piada's going to get from his uh, Hollywood. Now, at my next politics phase, I only have the impact of strength, so I won't see it, but I actually have a way how I can use my politics phase. Maybe not an ideal way, but I actually cancelled the international tourism impact. Uh, something that I almost missed out on because I, my turn was playing around and I saw I couldn't overtake Payard and culture production, and I was a bit, bit annoyed with that, and then... Uh, I almost you ended my turn, but I, <laughs> but I came to the conclusion, wait, uh, I can also cancel this pact if, I, if it annoys me. And so I cancel this pact. Of course, I miss out on two culture production from it, but Payada misses also out on three. And it allows me to have more culture than uh, Payada, and that gives me plus eight for the Empire State Building. So like this, I um, you know, can make my Empire State uh, Building bigger, which is uh, uh, quite a funny way to use the last uh, politics phase, cancelling the impact of tourism. I think that's not something that I've ever seen before. <laughs> And uh, now, then at my turn, I want to go for Nobel Prize, so I will develop the military theory. Sadly, the impact of government was also revealed a little bit too early for me. And then there are, I also will go for the computers. I could go for an upgrade, but DJ Parson was building the lab made sure that I can't, uh, that that even would not be enough to win the science for the Empire State Building. So I will uh, not go for this upgrade. Instead, I will destroy a mine and then build this additional religion. I have the resource for that. And now I have one more culture production in Payada. Um, and with that, I can get 24 instead of only 16 culture out of the Empire State Building, which you know, is uh, quite a decent one, three categories. and. Uh, and I also get a Nobel Prize, so I was relatively happy, uh, happy about my last turn. I was a little bit annoyed by the international negotiations, but I, maybe it also wouldn't have made the biggest difference at the end. And uh, so at least with cancelling the pact, I, uh, yeah, I can still get uh, 24 culture out of the Empire State Building. Yeah. I was aware of that option that you can like cancel the pact, but I was like, okay, so at least he will not see it, so there is like some cost for him, but I didn't know that you don't have like any good impacts because your civilization look quite good, quite balanced, so there is like plenty of impacts which will score more points than me than for me. And my last seed was the impact of happiness. It was I think plus sixteen for everyone and it used to be this way. This is like the one of the most useless impacts, yeah. I would say, that is very often like just like plus 16 for everyone, if you know how to and play the game. Then, uh, and in one, in one of 100 games, it will be minus 6 for someone <laughs> and plus 16 for the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was not happy about like revealing this impact of wonders, giving me like two less culture, but yeah, it was already there. And, and then I just go for some upgrades, finish the Hollywood, and that's all. And I, I was just like hoping that maybe I I will catch with that impact of colonies or something and I will win by some amount. But I wasn't like sure at all because as I said, there can be like quite nice impacts for the amount. Now even like the impact of culture. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close for the impacts, 180, 173, and 163. Um, but yeah, definitely close between you guys. We only have four impacts. So we get technology, 12, 20, and 16. So that is the one that I put in. So it gives me four yeah, more. Not nice from you. No, <laughs> not, not nice from me, but uh, yeah. I, I, those were the result of my, uh, of my calculations, but... We will see if they were correct because we get the colonies six, twelve, and uh, yeah, zero this was for me. From me, yeah. So this probably uh, this broke my neck. So this meant that I was probably out of the race completely. And the useless happiness and last impact is variety sixteen, sixteen, and eighteen. So, congrats, Piada. Well done, you take the win. Yeah, better than the last time when I was the last one and Leidenbaum still consistent on a second place. But yeah, I, I was feeling amazing because 
my, my other games didn't well so good, so I I was very happy that I beat Raiden Baum and the UDJ Parson at yeah. least in one game and didn't feel completely bad about this season. Yeah, at least a nice way to end it for you. Uh, and yeah, also really, really close here with Weidenbaum. So, uh, yeah, very interesting match, I think. No, I think uh, quite quite a close finish. And uh, no, I uh, was a little bit unhappy because I felt at uh, the end of age two, I had quite a strong position and I felt like maybe I have a good chance to win if I converted nicely. But uh, no, sadly, it wasn't enough. There were some events like terrorism. I think that one was uh, really quite swingy. I sadly missed out in the Cold War and then Payada uh, um, yeah, just managed it very nicely, getting those Nobel Prize, getting the Hollywood, getting Marlene. So uh, no, he uh, really made sure to score a lot of culture. And then uh, even though maybe his position at the end of age two didn't look as great, uh, he still uh, managed to uh, no, get quite a nice result off. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you guys want to take a look at the uh, the results of our league now? Yeah, we, we can do this. Yeah. So yeah, uh, very likely um, at the World Championship Games. There are still a few that I have to catch up on, and uh, when I've done that, the, probably the next ones will already have finished. So probably there won't be time for the Intermezzo Championship this season. But at least that means that uh, you will very likely win a, will have a 100% win rate of the games that are on YouTube this season. <laughs> so it's maybe not too yeah. bad for you. <laughs> I can still so come on. Don't one. put there any other games. You know, this is okay, the only okay. one I was able to win. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like a plan. But yeah, we can take a look. Uh, not all of them have finished, actually. Um, there's still one going on, so we aren't sure yet completely. Um, but I think the winner... The winner is already known. certain, yes. Martin Pecheur will take, I think it's first win in the Intermezzo. I think it's second even in a is round he won the last time. Ah, okay. and I think Aaron Green won the last time and the one before yeah. was the one by Martin Pecheur. I think 2022 was the year of Weidebaum in Intermezzo. Yeah. He won like the Grand Slam, you know, the, for all four <laughs> of them. Like you can say the spring, summer autumn and winter yeah. and this year is definitely not his in Intermezzo. This year he can't even win against Payara, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, for me it's still a close one because I'm in, in a game with Weidenbaum and Aaron Green and uh, depending on if I come ahead or behind Aaron Green, um, I, I think there's, Weidenbaum is safe to not get relegated, um, but me and Aaron Green are still fighting for our life here. 10 and 9 points, so all of us don't have so many points. A really good season by Marta. You, you can still get the silver medal. I can still get the silver medal if, if I win and Weidenbaum comes in last. So it's not yeah. decided yet, the last or the, the middle of the, of the group. But sadly this yes. will mean that Piada will go down next season again so we can promise yeah, so again to meet up in two seasons again or in two years who knows <laughs> so we can do this again yeah, yeah. I, I will try my best to just like come back to grandmaster in intermezzo because i still like the free player games the most because yeah. they are like more swingy and i think yeah you, you don't need to Built this that balanced civilization in free player, <laughs> and I, I, I like it. Yeah, me too, me too. All right, great. So uh, yeah, thank both of you guys uh, for joining me here for this uh, for this great game. Um, definitely check out Weidenbaum's uh, YouTube channel if you guys haven't, uh, and also Payadas. Payada does have a YouTube channel, and he's promised for years yeah, that he will. Yeah, like no, yeah, there are like no no new videos but there are like a few old ones and so you can at least look at them <laughs> exactly yeah uh, so guys any any last words yeah thanks for having us uh, it was a lot of fun and i hope it will also be entertaining uh, for the viewers but i think uh, no, we had a very nice discussion and i think it is also a bit of a special thing to get the uh, viewpoints of all the players yeah, yeah yeah and for the people who listened till the end i have maybe some Good news, or we will see if, if they are good, but uh, like I talked to Vladja like a month ago and he's like starting to thinking about maybe like some other expansion or something for TTA. Oh. So oh. it's not like that it will happen like in a year or so, but at least 
he for the first time like admitted that maybe this game is like not complete and there will be like something more so but we are probably like very far far away from that point but wow. it would be great that's that's some big news you're dropping here after two and a half hours of uh uh of video now so who, let's see who finds this first who really listens to the end of this uh the video um, yeah but it, it still can like end it like there will be like nothing but yeah it, it, at least it's a hope yeah yeah hope no. is all we need at the moment yeah Great, very, very interesting to hear that. Yeah, would be great to get another expansion. All right, so let's wrap it up, guys. Thank you to very much again. Hope you guys uh, at home were listening and watching enjoyed the video. Uh, and let's see if we can do this again in, in a couple of seasons, however long it will take. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.